Well, coming up next on our how to and what's new, we have got a real treat in store for you. If you use roe for salmon or steelhead or anything else, you're gonna wanna watch this. We're gonna show you how to best prepare those baits for successful fishing. That's right, on today's show, we'll find out how to cure eggs with Procure. We'll also find out what's new with Columbia River Knife and Tool and the Dutch Fork Custom Lure Company. Stay tuned. Bob File Boats and Motors has a great lineup of boats made for fishing in our region, and they can find one to fit any fishing style or budget. They have all the accessories too, like electronics from Lorant. Bob File Boats and Motors on Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee. Your town Ford is kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the Built Ford Tough Truck event. If you're looking for power, payload, towing, economy, your town Ford's got the truck for you. Head to your town Ford in East Wenatchee. Today we are with Steve Lynch. He's with Procure Baits and Sense. And I'll tell you what, Procure has been around a long time. But Steve, I know that a lot of people don't really understand how easy it is really to cure an effective bait. Correct. Yeah. And you're going to show us just how quick and easy it can be done. That's right. Great. Now I see you've got a nice pan of some beautiful eggs here. And if you're going to say, okay, Dave, you're going to be salmon fishing, you're going to be hover fishing down here in Lower Columbia, how, what would you do to these eggs to make them ready to go? Well, today I'm going to do two things for you. I'm going to do a liquid brine, okay. and I'm going to do these up tonight and they'll be ready to fish in the morning. Wow, and, that fast. And then the remainder I'm gonna do with the, with the dry cure, uh -huh. and those two can be ready as it is tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. And what a lot of people don't know is that Pro Cure was the first commercial cure on the market 30 years ago. Oh. Uh, we just celebrated our 30th anniversary last month, but True. now there's about 17 cure companies on the market. Yep. And this original Pro Cure line has never changed from, from the first day. Uh, we have several other lines of cures, but mm -hmm. this is still hands down our number one song cure. It's on my shelf at home. Yeah. And this is what we'll be doing some up with today, but what I'm going to do is, I call this idiot proof. This, what we're going to do a liquid brine. Uh, so all you do is you would take your skeins and butterfly them and quarter them. Okay. Uh, depending on how big they are. But I don't recommend cutting them into bite sized pieces. Just okay. butterfly them open, cut them in quarters. And then what I would do is just shake. We're going to use the red hot on this okay. and, and this for a steelhead brine you would leave them in two hours a salmon you could leave them in as much as 10 hours okay. uh, so for tonight though, i'm going to leave these in until about 10 o'clock so about six hour soak time uh -huh. and then i'll you know, put them to a colander let them drip for a couple minutes then put them on some towels paper towels and let them dry they'll be ready to fish in the morning terrific so all you do is just a quick shake in the bottle and this is outside use only because there is real dye in here. It will stain carpets, kids, dogs, whatever it gets a hold of. Yeah. So I just pour a little bit in the container and just gently put a few pieces of, like I said, the quartered skeins in. And you want just enough liquid to, to submerge the eggs. So you don't, you can fill it all the way to the top, but it's not necessary. And put in two more pieces here. And then I top it off with a little bit more liquid, just, just to, I, I've got everything covered. Make sure you have a good sealable cap. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is let this sit two hours, and then I will turn it upside down in two hours. Okay. That way the juices completely intermingle, mm -hmm. and, and this does an even job on curing all the berries. So this is done. I mean, you're, you That's it. You're gonna put no, them, I you're, like that. You're gonna put them in a colander at, at the end of you know six hours, let them drip for five minutes, and then I just with a roll of towels, I'll make a bed of towels and put them right on it, let the wind blow on them overnight. And yeah, dry. just so that they just dry out just a little bit. Correct. And, and depending if you're hover fishing, you where you want a pretty soft egg, you'll you'll give them a little dry time. But if you need a really firm egg for back bounce and bonneville, you'll let them give more air time so they'll, oh, okay. they'll firm up even more. All right. So. That's, that's, that's the end terrific. of that process. That's pretty simple. And then with the remainder of these eggs, all I'm going to do is just lightly sort this tub out, get an even layer of them, and then just lightly sprinkle. And, and this bottle is enough to do about 22 pounds of eggs. So the obvious thing I see is guys put way too much cure on the eggs. So just a little amount, just okay. about twice as heavy as table salt. And then with gloves on, I'll roll them around. Uh, roll them and then put some on the back side. But you can always put more on. But if you put too much on at the beginning, 
it's kind of hard to take it away. And oh. then that can actually burn the eggs, shrivel them up. Uh, so just keep in mind that this is enough to do approximately 20 pounds of eggs. Wow. And you can see where they're turning red. I'll put a little bit more. Oh on. yeah, the color just immediately comes up. Very nice. And then the cool thing with this is, is you don't really have to massage it into each berry because the way we're going to put them up in a container, they're going to juice up and then we'll turn the container upside down. We're going to do similar, just like we did with the brine. I'm just going to put them in a container and this is a pretty a simplified method. So they'll go two hours, then we'll turn it upside down for two hours. Okay. So at the end of four hours, you can then put them in the colander, let them drip, and then repeat the air process time. You want to meet plastic rack uh -huh. uh, to, to the firmness that you need. Again, yeah. even just let them air dry if you want a firmer egg. Correct. A the long longer you leave them to the air, the firmer they will get. Uh, See, this is great because, I mean, the processes that have been described to me take days. And that, you know? It's not that tough. It really, it's not. <laughs> this is great. Uh, like I said, usually the cleanup takes longer than the actual process itself. Right. Uh, for example, this, this here is, we're half done. Uh, all we're going to do is put a lid to these. Make sure it's a sealable lid, right? yeah. so it doesn't leak, but just put it on a shelf in the refrigerator. If you're out camping, you put it even in an ice chest, just yeah. so it stays cool. And at the end of two hours, just turn it upside down, and your juices will completely intermix. Okay. Uh, so if you want a wet, goopy egg for bobber fishing, you can put them in a colander, let them drip for just a couple of minutes, and put them up then. Yeah. It'll be a really heavy milking egg for bobber. Gotcha. But then, like I said, the longer, the firmer you need it, the longer air time you give it. <laughs> You have really simplified the process and you've saved a lot of time for a lot of anglers, let me tell you. And that's all you need to do to have a good quality egg. That's it. And, you, and you can control, like you say, the texture of those eggs just by the time you allow them to dry. Correct. Well, that's, that's terrific. Boy, thank you so much for taking the time to show us that process. My pleasure. And I can't wait to put them to use. You catch a big salmon with them tomorrow. Yeah, those are caught this morning, so they'll be fresh. That's be fresh great. Steve, once again, thanks so much. And also, I should mention, if people want to learn more about the other products that are available, what website should they go to? Well, at www.procure.com. Procure.com, just that simple, yep. because there's a wide range of products that you would be interested in. Every, just about every angler I know has a bottle of a Procure scent of one kind or another in their boat. So it's really handy to have. When you've got good cured eggs, that doesn't mean you don't add scent. That's right. That's right. Steve, thanks again. You bet. And one thing I'd like to point out to you, if I could, the difference that makes Procure different from the other scent companies, this is 100% real. So if you're using bait, you should be using the oil. But if you're using lures, you should go to the, the gel base. Okay. So, to my knowledge, we're the only one that's 100% of the real bait. So. All right. Well, yep. that's a good Perfect point. Thanks very much. Thank you. you have a All good right. Time. My pleasure. Gaboon Productions LLC is a full service video production company right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Go to gaboonproductions.com on the web, check us out on Facebook and on YouTube. Gaboon Productions LLC, the little video company capturing your big moments. Hooked on toys! Our fall fishing has been fantastic and it's going to get even better. Better get to Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee and get geared up for these fisheries. See them at 1444 North Wenatchee Avenue or shop online at hookedontoys.com. Hooked on Toys! Today, while we're at fish camp, we're talking to Lindsay Phelps, and she is with CRKT, knives and tools and other things. Correct. Yesterday, Lindsay spread out on the table a variety of items that are produced by her company that included axes and amazing array of things. Mm -hmm. But I told Lindsay, we're all about fishing. And could you share with us some of the items that you think would have real appeal to our fishing audience? Sure. Well, our first item is the Surf and Turf. This is designed by Russ Comer. He's a guide out of Alaska, and he now lives in North Dakota. He's done a lot of designs for us, hunting and fishing included. Uh, the Surf and Turf is a folding fillet. I'll set it right there for you. It is um, a palm handle, which is kind of a composite, so it's a type of plastic. It has a stainless steel blade, and as you can see, it is folding, so it's great for your tackle box or your backpack or however you want to check it out there. And the neat thing too about it 
is if you can see, it's got a double locking system. It's called the auto locks. So you hold that down and slide it over. So when this knife is fully engaged, it has that secondary locking system. So the locking liner, if it were to fail, it'll stop it from closing on your hand. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice feature on that knife. And I really like the size, mm -hmm. the length of blade, and it's a very attractive, and as you say, this composite material, mm -hmm. this would last someone forever. Yes. Even got a handy clip goes right on your belt. I like mm -hmm. that, that's a very nice piece. What else do you have for the fisherman? We also have the Big Eddie series. So we have two different fillet size, sizes, which is the nine inch and the seven inch. They have a nice glass filled nylon sheath. They also have a craton handle, which is checkered for a great grip. A stainless steel blade, so it's good for corrosion resistance. And also has a great flex. So it has a hollow grind as well, which helps those fillets just float off. And I should mention, Lindsay, this is one of my favorite. I've had this knife for at least three years. It goes with me everywhere. And what the reason I purchased this particular blade, knife, was because of the length of blade. You know, here we are at fish camp and everybody's out after king salmon. Right. And when you catch kings, you need this longer blade. One of the things I like about it is the flex that she mentioned, the great grip of the handle when you're dealing with slippery critters mm -hmm. like we do. And it holds an edge, Lindsay, very well. I'm very impressed with that. Great. I don't have to take this in and put it through my work chart very often. It holds a blade very well. So this one for big game fishing, for large fish like king salmon and steelhead and others, mm -hmm. is perfect. I really like it. And I really like the, this case that it comes with too. Mm -hmm. It's very secure, easy, and I can throw it in a bag, you know, and it doesn't mess up my other materials or other equipment. Very nice piece. And you also, and that's the Big Eddie series. Correct. And you also have this in a nine inch. Seven inch. Yes. Seven inch. So it's the Big it. Eddie the and nine. the Big Eddie too. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And the seven inch, same design, same style. And again, also I should mention too that it has a serrated section mm -hmm. toward the handle, which really helps you cut through the backbones of larger bones of the fish. Mm -hmm. This is perfect for trout, for perch for walleye, for those types of fish. Right. Great. Well, this will be my next purchase <laughs> from your company because, you know, you do, you can't buy one knife or blade for all purposes. And the Big Eddie is my choice. Big Eddie 2 actually is my choice for the larger fish. And I've got to get Big Eddie 1 <laughs> for my Spidey Rays. That's just a dandy. That's a great yeah. set. Thank you. Well, Lindsay, you've got some great products here, and I want to tell people that this is just a very small glimpse at, at what CRKT produces. And I would, if they wanted to look at more of your product, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have a website. We do. It's CRKT.com. Just that simple. Mm -hmm. And that'll open the world of these products to you, right? In the comfort of your own home. And if this is any example of the quality of what they produce, you'll be happy with anything you get from this company. Thank Lindsay, you. <laughs> thanks for taking the time to visit with us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Coming up next on our How To and What's New program, we're going to visit with Keith Eschbach, founder of Dutch Fork Custom Lures. And we're gonna learn more about this great product line. And if you're a spiny reef fisherman, you're gonna watch it. fish camp again and this was such a treat for me. I got a note from Keith Eschbach months ago and he introduced himself as with Dutch Fork Custom Lures but what he had for me was the first true locking clevis and you call it the no loss clevis is that right? No loss Keith? quick change clevis. And it it's everything that that phrase describes. I was frustrated when I was catching walleye. If I had a favorite rig, 
they actually bite the blade off because I was using quick, quick change clevises. And you want to be able to quick change your, your blades when you're walleye fishing because you got to experiment all the time. He came up with one that absolutely locks the blade in place and you can interchange it very easily. Now, he brought a sample of that and I mention it, but it's kind of hard to describe or even show on camera. However, if you go to my website and to my product review page, you'll see a good photograph and it gives you a description of what this is all about. But what Keith is really all about is producing amazing blades for walleye fishing and for other purposes too. Now, the real difference, I think, is in the materials you use and your ability to apply a lot of different color combinations. Correct. And what material are you using, or is that? We're not going to disclose that, but <laughs> we've actually combined a couple different plastics to yeah. get the right consistency and weight. Yes. And the correct vibration. And there's a lot of research and development going into this. Yes. And we came up with a true winner. It, it absolutely is. They have a great action. They spin freely on these clevises and others you might want to use. And you've even come out with a double clevis. Correct. And that has a lot of people that I've shown them to really fascinated. That's going to create a whole different set of sound vibrations when these blades go through the water. Correct. And believe it or not, our, our single clevis says you can pull one of our plastic blades at 0.4 mile an hour. And we found out with a double clevis, which a Colorado blade will splay to each side. Yes. Because of the water resistance, it'll go even slower. Oh, now that's what walleye guys really like to see. Yes. And uh, that's great, Keith. You guys have made a lot of progress. They just came out with a catalog this year that has a lot of descriptions of their different blades and here's their uh, locking clevises and their quick change clevises in a lot of their colors and styles and you can order their beads and blades and a lot of different things. And so I would encourage you to go to their website, which is www.dutchforkcustomlures.com. It's just that simple. And that'll open the world of all these different color combinations, sizes, and actions, you know, singles, doubles. I mean, just look at what's available to you. And many of these colors, what I liked about it, they're not generally available here. We have kind of our standard patterns and colors that we use here in the Northwest. And you really introduced me to another spectrum of colors that are just terrific. And again, because they're applied to this new material, they are bright, amazingly bright. One thing you probably don't know. Yeah. If you take a chartreuse blade like this uh -huh. and you put blue metallic beads behind it, when you go around, it actually gives you a green effect because you're able to see straight through the blade. So it's mixing the color palette. You put red behind it, you get an orange effect as it goes around. <laughs> this is really fun. I tell you what, he's introducing a, a line of products that walleye guys are going to have a lot of fun playing with. And you're based in? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, that's right. And so that's, uh, he's from Sirius Walleye Country back there. And so I would encourage all of you that have any interest in walleye or pike. I mean, look at, look at the sizes you're producing now. Right, the, uh, the smaller blades for trout and kokanee have taken off. Yeah. And the larger blades up to the eights has taken off for walleye in the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. And we just came out with a 10 and a 12, and we just got our first reports back. The muskies are eating. <laughs> well, that's just great. It's such a treat to see you here at Fish Camp. I was so excited when uh, Ed told me you were going to be out here. And so we've only communicated via email and packaged mail. And it's so great to see you out here, Keith. Glad to be here. And thanks for taking the time for visiting with us today.